Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and yes, we have returned. Some of you may have missed this. It's been about a week, myself and Brian, a lot of going on in our uh, individual lives, and we just couldn't get on the horn together at the end of last week and just pooped during the weekend and everything else. So, uh, oh yeah, Brian's here too. Uh, welcome a one Mr. Brian e. Roach. What's going on, Brian? Well, uh, yesterday I went down the shore, as they say in these parts, uh, you know, down the shore. I, I, I found myself some ghost pepper barbecue sauce and uh, made myself some country ribs last night with the ghost pepper barbecue sauce. So uh, I'm suffering the consequences, my friend. <laughs> yeah, and I'm suffering some consequences too, Brian. Uh, well, uh, first of all, if people were wondering where I was, I was in a car dealership for the better part of last week. <laughs> and that just, oh. yeah, that was fun. Um, but you know what? Uh, you know, purchased a new vehicle. So uh, happy with my ride. But geez, man, that could be a time suck. And when you're going to different places and test driving different cars, and everything i just can't believe i blinked and the week was over and you know uh but now we're here and you know maybe somebody just thought we quit or anything like that but speaking of you know swatting the hornet's nest i just got sick of seeing it i got i'm sick of this um it seems like anybody who can that wants clicks has put up something about colin kaepernick steelers backup quarterback then it was the Cam Newton thing. Cam Newton gets signed by the Patriots. And everybody's crying over spilled milk. Look, these are two like, and and for all intents and purposes, I'm surprised no one's asked about Johnny Manziel and his whereabouts. So, <laughs> Canadian. I actually read an article about old uh, old Mister Manziel who said, "I think my career is done." Oh, you think so? I was just I, about. I, I think he's gotten wise. Maybe uh, yeah. you know, it's it wasn't him uh, bouncing around even in the Canadian Football League or the defunct Alliance of American Football. No, uh, I'm actually shocked that he didn't make an appearance in the XFL. There was all these <laughs> little little rumblings. I know he was trying to redeem his career, and of course, there was nothing that could be redeemed because he played for the Cleveland Browns. So. <laughs> Just there you go, but you know, we've even like I, I know Flash out there, Zacadonia. He he even made a reach at that that I that I I don't want to say aloud, but maybe more or less. I don't want to sound like the overlord of content here, but we try and stay away from the the old clickbait. And it's funny because uh, one of the things that came across my uh, desk was maybe a barstool article. It's just the same stuff about backup quarterbacks. Why are we so fixated on back backup? The key word is backup quarterbacks. This isn't the New England Patriots situation. Tom Brady has moved on. They had Jared Stidham and Brian Hoyer and maybe some other guy that I don't know. Uh, there did they even did they draft someone I don't even know. Um, the, the the point I is remember. I don't know that they have a solid number one or an answer at quarterback and they're just kind of fishing at a whole bunch of stuff here. This was where the Steelers were without Ben Roethlisberger last year. There's a lot of people who aren't realizing Ben Roethlisberger will be there this year. There's a lot of people gloom and doom. Well, what if he goes down again? Well. Uh, where do I begin? There was a comment. I was trying to find it, and, and um, you know, I, I just I can't. I need to find it here because it's just so, so bad. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with it, with it and, of course, it doesn't. Um, oh, here we go. So uh, here's some of the comments. I'm going to protect the innocent by not mentioning any names or where these came from, but, of course, you get some of the finer finer replies when you're out there on social media, right? So oh, yeah. uh, I had I had written uh, an article that went up yesterday. Uh, by the way, happy July, everyone. I can't believe we made it here so far. <laughs> you know, what's next? We've had, we talked about the murder hornets, and then there was the Sahara sand and everything that's coming over. I don't know what's next, Brian. Uh, they've already moved back the Hall of Fame game to next year and the Hall of Fame festivities. And I know Donnie Shell was in that centennial class. And I know they were doing something special with that. So hopefully he actually does go in. The guy has waited forever to get his moment in the spotlight. And it's just, is he going to be doing it via Zoom meeting this year? How how lame would that be for the 100th Centennial class? But I, I digress. I, I know I went off on a tangent here. The world's ending. Uh, 
I said Steelers fans should stop asking to sign another quarterback. It's just preposterous with the amount of guys that they do have on the roster right now. You look at other NFL rosters. I mean, I mentioned it. I mentioned the Patriots. Okay, Brian Hoyer has NFL experience. Cam Newton has NFL experience. But how many of these teams actually have quarterbacks who have NFL experience, and then they completely do bomb out regardless of if it's Josh McCown that ends up going in, what, up with the Jets or whatever last year, or uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick with the Dolphins because, you know, Josh Allen or whoever else. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't Josh Allen. Uh, jo- um Rosen, the other guy. Yeah, Rosen. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rosen didn't work out after they traded for him. And it, you have all these things that are going on. The Bengals with Andy Dalton and uh, who was last year, Ryan Finley or whatever they tried to do. Now they're going to try and do it with Joe Burrow and probably Finley is the backup. You know, it, these things, it, until you see the young guys get out there, they're not necessarily always in the best situations. And I said, you got to have, you got to stop asking to sign another quarterback. Well, here is one of the comments that came. If Ben, of course, it's all. If Ben gets hurt, we're done. We couldn't beat the Ratbirds when they played their backups. And I have, I have some actual data that's going to go along with the rest of this show uh, later on. It kind of goes along the same uh, trend that myself and uh, Zach Meckler did maybe a few weeks ago when we looked at all of the depth charts. I actually compared when some of the starters were out in certain games didn't play or didn't or or maybe only played like a a, a little bit of pocket change of a game like a J- James Conner uh, in a certain example it, the shining example Brian Thursday night football Browns game but we'll get to it there in a second if Ben gets hurt we're done we couldn't beat the Rappers when they played their backups i agree this guy goes i agree all you got to do is look at the Rams <laughs> they had Kurt Warner as a backup so when the starter went down they didn't skip a beat where did Kurt Warner come from? Kurt Warner came from some corner of the earth that also surfaced Devlin Duck Hodges. We're talking 1AA, FCS football, Northern Iowa, and Kurt Warner wasn't necessarily the guy at Northern Iowa either. He was a guy who ended up coming into the Arena League and did okay, and what was it? Was it Mike Martz was the coach at the time? Was it Martz? Or no, 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 Dick Vermeil. Dick Vermeil. Yeah. Um, he saw him. And this was, he got an opportunity, and it just so happened that, was it Trent Green that went down? But you got to also. I remember who, yeah. Yeah, it was Trent Green, and he didn't necessarily do, I don't think, amazing. But how many Hall of Famers were on that roster or Hall of Fame caliber guys like Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, Marshall Falk? Orlando Pace on on the offensive line. There were just so many guys. As they hear Hakeem, you remember that? Slot receiver became a buzzword. That guy went up to Detroit, didn't do anything, but got paid a boatload of money based on what he did. Ricky Prohl, they had – it was the greatest show on turf. Me or you could have stepped in there if we had a decent arm and probably did okay too. You know what I mean? Now, I know I'm being a little facetious there, but Mark Bulger eventually took the reins there for Kurt Kurt Warner, and it still didn't skip a beat because there was a system there and there were a ton of talented guys. And I'm trying to think who else came in after Marshall Falk did, and they still did well. This blows my mind how people have some revisionist history and they look at everything as just one picture of the Steelers went 8-8 eight and eight, didn't make the playoffs because all the quarterbacks sucked, but you just don't know if Duck Hodges would have been Kurt Warner because nobody knew if Kurt Warner was Kurt Warner when he ended up getting the opportunity. Uh, you know, we'd like to pick, uh, you know, cherry pick the, the past. That's what we like to do. We cherry pick the past by basically saying once in a blue moon, something good happened when the starting quarterback disappeared. And of course, if our starting quarterback disappeared, everything will be just that way. If we only sign every quarterback who has ever been released from any team anywhere. (laughs) Yeah. And I will say this, for most of the filth that I probably will rattle off here, most of the guys actually kind of were in agreement from where I was coming from with this article. Somebody said, you know, I, I mentioned that the backups were playing with backups. And somebody said, you know, this was the end of the season. We're one cheap hit and a turnover away from winning earlier, which is absolutely true. James Conner doesn't fumble. Juju Smith-Schuster doesn't fumble. They probably win in San Francisco. They probably win at home against Baltimore. Maybe there wasn't even a, you know, that was overtime and they gave him the chip shot. Maybe if there isn't a cheap hit, you don't get the overtime. We said, and I know it's like, it's like, coulda, woulda, shoulda. This is the way things shake out. 
but it, it, it is. It, it's unfortunate. And, uh, you know, somebody else said Steelers went 5-3 and three with Mason under center. He got his head rattled. He wasn't the same. I believe a lot of that. And when I looked at some of this data, it kind of goes there. But, uh, you know, there's some other comments that, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the ones that are the nice and more positive. Uh, somebody else said, you know, I'm glad you said it, Joe. I unfollowed a clickbait Steelers Facebook media outlet for the Miss the Boat articles just for this reason. Talking about, you know, Kaepernick or Cam or Jameis Winston. We've, we've already forgotten about him, right? And you don't know how these guys are going to do in their situations. And, and you could always look uh, in the rearview mirror. But... They're maybe looking in the rearview mirror at this that a guy like Mason Rudolph, Doc Hodges, maybe even Paxton Lynch, they might not even see the field this season. But my whole point in saying this was the Steelers have faith in these guys because they did get experience last year. And so you have four guys coming into camp. You remember, Brian, Artie Burns was the guy who got drafted. Do you remember the sentiment about that? There were two things that were going on at that time. One was they should start looking at the future the guy behind Ben Roethlisberger. The other was they need to take a cornerback. They haven't taken one in 25 years. So they take a cornerback, and then it was not that one. Now, those some of those people ended up being right, but I think it was because William Jackson III ended up going a pick earlier to Cincinnati, and the Steelers were kind of like, meh. Then all of a sudden it was, uh, what, John Elway ate our lunch or whatever because they got Paxton Lynch. Well, where's Paxton Lynch now? He didn't. He played for two years as a first-round draft pick, what, like 26th overall or something like that, to the Denver Broncos and not to the Steelers, and everybody was gr- crying over that, and now he's on the roster. He may, ha- he may have that opportunity finally to show us if he could be that guy that's the, that's the successor, and he's also had experience playing in the NFL. Maybe not the best of experience, but I go back to, and it's interesting, um, well, I just want to leave it there for a second because you look at a team like the Indianapolis Colts that was a playoff team the previous year. They lose Andrew Luck. He retires. They have Jacoby Brissett, who was a starter before that. He gets hurt. You have Brian Hoyer, who's been a starter journeyman around the league. And this was a, a, a team that you know the Steelers played during the year. I know Adam Vinatieri missed a field goal, but he shouldn't have never been in position for that to begin with. Thank you, referees, once again. So it was sweet football justice by the football gods. But look where the Colts ended up at. And, you know, you can't always say, hey, we, we, if we have this veteran quarterback or this guy that's experienced, including the guys I'm talking about, I'm not necessarily saying they're going to come in and win games, but you can't necessarily say that somebody like a Cam Newton or a Jameis Winston is going to come in and win games either. Uh, yeah, you, you really can't. Um, there's no guarantee of any of that. There's no guarantee that they're going to fit the system. There's no guarantee that given – uh, you know, the, the limited amount of snaps that they're going to integrate into the system and learn it well, uh, you know, they're not going to necessarily fit with the same schemas that, that Ben Roethlisberger uses. With, uh, they have to develop chemistry. with There's, there's an innumerable uh, amount of things that, that go into making a successful offense play successfully. Um, and, and there's, you know, when, when it happens, right. Absolutely. When it happens. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, when it happens, it, it's, it's kind of magical and, and, and you just can't, you can't always expect just any guy can, you know, you can't always plug the, the square peg into the round hole or the round peg into the square hole, whatever it may be, just because a guy's available doesn't mean that you need him. Um, you know, and I know that, the, the, the topic du jour now, because Cam Newton has gone to the Patriots, um, which, you know, we'll wait and see what that transpires. Which Instant of success. 16, yeah. 17 and 0, however many games. Uh, may, they may only play nah. six games this year because of coronavirus. They're going to win them all. It don't matter how many they play. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I'm, not, I'm not laying any odds on that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, of course, Richard Sherman is very upset about all this because uh, he's a former MVP. But, he's an, again, he's a former MVP who hasn't done anything for several years. Um, and, you know, everybody now, of course, is because Cam is gone. Uh, the, the, the rumor mill or the, the, uh, the quarterback du jour has, has run around back to, well, the Steelers need to sign Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and I, look, I'm, I'm just going to remind everyone the last season Colin Kaepernick played professional football was in 2016 and the, uh, his quarterback record, his starting record during that season was one and 10. 
One in ten. Well, that's because of the rest of the team, Brian, obviously. Oh, well, clearly, yes. Uh, his <laughs> record in 2015 was two and six. And the year prior to that was eight and eight. So you, you're not talking – because he had one good year where the 49ers went to the Super Bowl, surprised a lot of people with the different kind of offense that, that the NFL hadn't adapted to, and then lost to you know some other team that I don't like and I don't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, that, in that game, does not mean and, – and that Super Bowl season was seven years ago, eight years ago? This is, you know, there's no guarantee Colin Kaepernick is anywhere near the quarterback he may have been at, at any given point in time. There is no guarantee, you know, th there's this a fantasy about his, his statistics and his quality and his capabilities that when you simply look at the last three seasons, he actually was on the field and played football. It wasn't that impressive. There was a system that worked for him. I, I think just yes. the same way when Tim Tebow had won some games and, and that Denver Broncos team caught you know, caught fire. Uh, I, I think almost the same way, and believe it or not, the same system that's in Baltimore right now with Greg Roman, that's what Colin Kaepernick yep. had back then. But RG3, too. I, I think that mm -hmm. some teams in the league figured it out. I think some teams in the league are going to figure out the Ravens this year, too. They weren't so equipped I. They weren't equipped for him, particularly in the division. I, I really do think that all three – well, maybe maybe to the lesser extent the Browns. I know I rag on them, but they had let some guys go, some of their in, interior linebackers. So we'll see if a Mac Wilson or somebody like that. I also i am not uh, sold on their safeties either. Their corners are young. You know, Greedy Williams, we liked Greedy Williams. Denzel Ward came from Ohio State. We're Ohio State fans. So, you know – it is what no, it is. We'll he's see. Dead, dead to me. He's dead. <laughs> they all are, unless they end up in Pittsburgh, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, the the whole thing is, I, I do think that the AFC North, particularly the Bengals, dumping their money and and putting and trying to infuse some youth, and also working on that secondary too. I, I really do think that everybody's looking at, hey, we got to play these guys twice, and they're going to find ways to limit it. And I think the Steelers actually did have it figured out. Okay, yeah, the last game of the season. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get to that one too because there's some things that I had forgotten about. And, and we start to lump things together and we see eight and eight and we see, oh, well, Ben went down and it all went to whatever. Uh, there were some incredibly close games that the Steelers lost too. I always point out that Seattle Seahawks game at home, the home opener where Mason came in at halftime and Terrell Edmonds probably had one of the shadier pass interference. It was not called on the field, right? And right. Pete Carroll challenged it, and they overturned it and gave them the pass interference call. The complete yeah. opposite of what happened the entire rest of the season with the officials and instant replay, and that hosed the Steelers, and they end up losing. And that that was about to be third and long or whatever. Or they were ready to punt. That was third and long. And they, yeah. were, they were ready to punt. They had the punt team coming out. That was game over right there. The Steelers would have had an extra victory and ended up in the playoffs by virtue of tiebreakers. They could have controlled their destiny in various many other ways. They can't necessarily control who's available and who's healthy, unfortunately. And that's one of the things you know a lot of people are talking about with the Ben Roethlisberger thing. Now, you mentioned Kaepernick. You mentioned the <laughs> – it's funny you mentioned the Harbaugh Bowl. I, I'm like, I didn't want either of those two teams to win. John Harbaugh and Jim, Jim – Come on. You didn't watch. You didn't watch at least – I, didn't, for the commercials. Watch. I, I mean, didn't watch it all. I was sitting in a hotel in Houston, Texas, and I refused to watch. I brought my PlayStation 4 with me, or my PlayStation 3, and I played Rock Band. <laughs> it was probably better then, but we almost got it our was. wish. The power went out in the, in the mm. Superdome, and it almost got my wish. It was almost like a Buffalo Wild Wings commercial, So it, where, where they hit the button and they continue and you get some bonus football. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, we saw what Mike Vick did when Chip Kelly was his coach in Philadelphia and that, that offense, and then the Dream Team imploded there. And he went there for a year, and Kaepernick, I, I don't know, Chip Kelly could just be an, a terrible football coach for all I know. It probably is. That's pro more or less my opinion of him is, is he's not as good as everyone had hyped him up to be with that uh, Oregon offense, bringing in the pro and running like 100 plays in a game and wearing everybody out and getting everybody injured and everything else. But you would think a guy that could run the RPO and be a mobile quarterback. I don't even know how more mobile he is now. Is he like 31 or 32, Kaepernick is, aside from having not played for so long? He's up there. Uh, these mobile guy, these mobile quarterbacks, usually when yeah, they hit their 30s. 32. And I know Cam Newton was that guy. He was the Superman guy. The reason I, I thought Cam could be like a fit he had a cannon of an arm, and he was a big guy that was hard to break down, just like Ben Roethlisberger. And I always thought that, just like Big Ben, he didn't get the same respect of the referees when it came to hits 
particularly hits that were flagged if it was Tom Brady wearing his skirt. So I, I always had a soft spot for Cam Newton. And also I said I, I like how he used to dress like the maybe the diabolical cartoon villain too. <laughs> he had yeah. that style. And I, I, I liked it. I know some people didn't like it, but I always liked that better than Aaron Rodgers running around with a wrestling belt acting like he was some type of phony champion. So, And this uh, coming yeah. from a wrestling fan, I, like I, I almost despise Aaron Rodgers <laughs> like to a whole almost? other degree. Uh, well, you know, I got a little bit of an ounce of respect in there for him. Uh, not as much as I have uh, with the Tom Brady thing and everything. But, you know, uh, aside from harping about these guys and what they did, and people are going to throw stats at us and say this and that, it's like, I, I think the ship has sailed. It's like, why not just like bring Bruce Gradkowski back or Charlie Batch? Maybe he could still throw a ball, you know? Uh, it would be no sure. different. Char- even Charlie, we have the rosy memories, and we've talked about it many times here. He's basically a 500 quarterback, and he, he did okay, and they-, and they tried to hide some weaknesses, run the football. This is the same thing the Steelers were trying to do. The problem was they didn't have James Conner and or Benny Snell sometimes to help protect these guys sometimes they didn't have the same guys in the offensive uh line uh that were the, the traditional starters even got shaken up a few times through throughout the season there were a lot of things that hindered any type of growth or progress or the type of experience that mason rudolph or duck hodges for that matter could even have the biggest one being mason rudolph getting knocked out cold in that ravens game i think that made him a little more timid and scared and then he had to sit and recollect and, and we saw just a flash of that against the jets and then the guy breaks his collarbone you can't get any unluckier than being knocked out benched brought back then injured again you know what I mean? It just it's very yeah. unfortunate for any type of progress with him. If if this were somebody like a I don't know, a, a Sam Darnold, for example, it's probably a good example there. How is he supposed to have any type of growth or anything like that when the guy can't he wasn't able to stay on the field. He had mono and all these other things and then you saw just how bad I don't even remember who was in there for him, but the Browns got lucky and played like their third string guy who couldn't move the ball like two inches. I know there was some dink and dunk and things like that. The Steelers still played to the strengths of the guys that they had. The problem was they didn't have like Ben had. Um here we go. Some lightning round here, Brian. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger, rookie year. Who's he handing the ball off to? Uh, gee, uh, I don't. Not that I'm gonna not remember because how could I forget? But I'm just <laughs> saying, gee, uh, isn't it a, a Hall of Fame uh, caliber running back? Uh, with you know, uh, Hall of Fame caliber, game. actual Hall of Fame quarterback, an actual or Hall court, of Fame not quarterback. running back, running back, running back, yeah, running back. So, Jerome um, Bettis. Yeah, Jerome Bettis. Yeah, okay. Well, that's my point. Hall of Famer. So when somebody's trying to yeah. make the Kurt Warner thing there, Marshall Falk, Hall of Famer. Uh, who's yeah. he throwing the ball to? Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward. Uh, where's Heinz Ward rank in Steelers history among receivers with receptions and things of that matter? He's at the top in receptions. I think he has a 1,000 right on the nose. I think he's all-time, right, in the franchise. Yep. And, and yep. that still gets him somewhere up in the – in the higher echelon of the NFL, not, not as much as some guys like Marvin Harrison or Jerry Rice or thing, you know, of that nature, but still yeah. franchise franchise. Great. One of the fan, franchise greats. I know there's been a lot. There's been Swan. There's been Stallworth, even Lewis lips, guys like that. Antonio Brown. Uh, yeah, he had him too eventually, but I'm talking about when Ben was young, they protected him by running the ball. He had a guy that he had one security blanket. He had another security blanket. Heath Miller. Where's Heath Miller rank among the franchise tight ends in Steelers history. That would be at the top. That would be the goat, baby. Uh, it's just you could go on and on. I did. Did Ben have plaques? I think he had plaques for like a year or two. Then he had San Antonio, and you yeah. know it goes on and on and on. And, and in some cases, he made those guys, but he was able to grow, and he had he had a tremendous amount of talent that was around him. Not to mention that defense, 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 baby. You could you could hear the uh, the speech. Every day on Sunday, defense, 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 you know? <laughs> so yep. uh, it's just when you're trying to compare, I understand that the defense was a big reason as to why like Mason or Duck may have crossed the finish line with eight wins, but you got to look at some of the numbers here. Number one, overall, big thing that happened last year, and I know I'm rambling. I know I'm getting short-winded. There were four games. There were 16 in a season last year. So this is a quarter of the Steelers' games that had more than one quarterback play. That is is disruptive. Yes, it is. There is a different rhythm. 
And this is the reason why you get some guys on the field, maybe like Johnny Holton, who's playing scout team or whatever with Hodges, just to try and get some guys that are on the same page. It's the reason why Juju didn't have a good year, aside from being banged up. Juju missed what? Uh, Well, if you really start to dig into this, let me just go right into here. You have um, Mason Rudolph as a starter up until he gets knocked out. So he comes in week two. He plays, he starts against San Francisco, he plays and starts, wins against the Bengals. So then uh, his third game as a starter, he gets knocked out, and Duck Hodges comes in week five. That goes to OT, they lose, Juju fumble. Uh, Dante Moncrief, Butterfinger, somewhere in this, uh, maybe more than once, has Mm -hmm. his imprint on it. You tend to forget who they've been throwing the ball to. You tend to forget the guys who weren't in in some of these games or got hurt or didn't play a a multitude of it. So he, he, he goes out. The Steelers are 1-4. and four. They go to L.A. They play the Chargers with Duck Hodges, Sunday Night Football, and Phillip Rivers does what Phillip Rivers does. He gives the ball to Devin Bush and make it Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Steelers defense scores enough points. They cross the finish line. Good. Okay? You still have James Conner about 50% participation in that game, by the way. But they also have Benny Snell. And Benny Snell played the most that he ever played up to that point in that game. You go and they have a bye. They come back. They play Monday Night Football on my birthday. Miami Dolphins. Uh, they go down what, like fourteen nothing right out the gate. They look, they stink. <laughs> they turn it around. They shut the Dolphins out unanswered. However many points, I forget what it was that they scored. It was lopsided by the end of this. And uh, Micah Fitzpatrick revenge game, I guess too. But you yeah. also had Mason Rudolph return in that game. You go to the very next week and they play the Colts. And they play at home, and everybody's like, oh, goodness, you know, it comes down, and all they remember is they won by the skin of their teeth because Adam Vinatieri uh, missed the field goal. Well, there was a lot of other things going on in that game, too. You had no James Conner. You had no Benny Snell. They were running running Jalen Samuels, and they were running uh, Trey Edmonds. They had Rosie Nix for two games there, the Dolphins game and the Colts game, and he's gone. He doesn't play in any other games the rest of the year before or after, right? Um, Dante Moncrief gets cut. He's gone. He was still playing about a quarter of the game. He, he didn't play in two of the games. He didn't play against 49ers or Ravens, but he played in the Seahawks game. He played against Chargers. He played against the Dolphins. They got rid of him so they could keep uh, the, the compensatory pick with Le'Veon Bell. Two games later, you right. lose Ryan Switzer. You don't have Ryan Switzer either. Not to, I, I don't know if that makes much of a factor, but still a guy. I'm, I'm, going, with, I'm going with no. <laughs> it's, it's, still, it's still a moving piece. Uh, That Bengals game, uh, and even before that, the 49ers game, they lose Vance McDonald during part of that game, and then they don't have him for the Bengals game. They bring in Nick Vanette off a trade. They cut Xavier Grimble entirely. They have to play Zach Gentry for a little bit. And then Zach Gentry, that's the most that he plays against the Bengals week four. There's so many moving components in this thing that it just it makes my head hurt. But it's that turning point at the middle of the season in week nine, midway through the season, where you have every single game except for the start of the Browns game on Thursday Night Football in Week 16 against the Jets, where you have at least two of the penciled-in offensive starters. And by this, I mean James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, Vance McDonald, or any of the five of the the go-to offensive linemen. Villanueva, Foster, Pouncey, DeCastro, who's my other guy, Matt Filer. You're missing at least two of those guys, if not more than two of them. In all of these games from that turning point from the middle of the season on, that is very disruptive to these quarterbacks having any type of success. Even if Ben Roethlisberger is out there, and now I know Ben, he's still going to get it done more than likely, but I think the offense still struggles in some way. Yeah, look, it was a bad season. Uh, They got bit by the injury bug. Uh, It it kept biting them, and uh, there's just – there's. It's the kind of season that you expect to come out of it and be like one in fifteen, because you expect with that kind of, of of depletion of your offense to be in a situation where you're drafting top ten. Uh, that's that's just that kind of season, right? You still have a like that's what happens to teams who have talent, right? And then one cog goes down, they lose a lot of stuff. All of a sudden, you're wondering how come they got such a high draft pick? That's they, they're still loaded. Well, this is how it happens. It just the the you know the the truth is the Steelers don't just quit on a season because of what's happened. They believe in their next man up mentality. They that stems down from Tomlin all the way and and from the ownership all the way down. 
and they they continued to try and win games. And when you look at what they went through last season, the fact that they ended up eight and eight, they were on the cusp of making, uh, you know, the playoffs is just a, it's a remarkable feat. It's not what we all want. And it's not what we're going to be satisfied with. But if you can take a moment and step out of, of your black and gold uh, shades and look at it for, for what it was, it's a hell of a job. Uh, and let me, let me just add this uh, completely irrelevant piece of information. <laughs> did, you know that, did you know that whale sharks have teeth on their eyeballs? Uh, I may have heard that somewhere. It's not something that I uh, I keep as some of the useless information in my brain, but yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> and and the reason I bring that up <laughs> is because that's about as relevant to this to the quarterback situation as any of this other stuff is. In other words, they're not going to do it. They got three quarterbacks on the roster. They're not signing another quarterback, and we need to stop asking. It's just like having teeth on your eyeballs <laughs> well the, the thing is and i'm reading some more i'm reading some more uh comments and it's just uh, somebody said they shot their load by franchising bud dupree total waste could use that money on offense for another qb or maybe a running back you know what that's exactly what you need to do spend six million dollars on a backup quarterback that's may, may never see the field Perfect, perfect, makes perfect sense. They never sense. even make the team. Then you, and then you, and then guess what? Bud Dupree goes somewhere else, has 15 sacks, and then you're kicking yourself because you can't stop the run because you have another Jarvis Jones out there. Uh, it's just, by the way, of the 11 and a half sacks that Bud Dupree had, going back on this, Brian, I think there was like four strip sacks. Four of those were yeah. strip sacks. Uh, all four of his four fumbles were all strip sacks. So, you know, get off the high horse. Maybe it was a magical season. I don't know. But if, if you even get one or two, that, that's a heck of a year. So, yeah, it just – I want to bang my head. There, there, was another, there was another guy that was on here somewhere on social media. I don't remember exactly where to read the comment off exactly, but he had said something to the effect of the Denver Broncos have been looking for their guy ever since John Elway retired. And I'm like, um, you know, they, they, they tried the Tebow experiment, still made the playoffs with him. Then changed gears entirely, went out and got Peyton Manning, went to two Super Bowls and won one of them. Now, I understand they haven't done anything really since, and they've done some coaching changes and things of that nature, too, and completely uprooted the system that they had in place. Uh, you know, Gary Kubiak was buddy-buddy with John Elway, and then I guess he had some health issues, and he goes to retire, and, you know, they, they're still looking for their way there. That's a whole t entirely different situation that you you know he just totally glossed over that the Broncos played in two Super Bowls with a Hall of Fame quarterback that they picked up in free agency. But uh, those guys just aren't sitting around growing on trees that you can just go and get them. And right. even for Philip Rivers to be available, you know, late in his career, we'll see how much gas he has left in the tank. That might be a great fit for the for the Indianapolis Colts. But one of the big things was uh, when I look at all this. There was another comment I was going to make about some one of these idiotic things that I read, but I'm really trying not to read them, and I'm trying not to get too beat up over it. So the Colts, when the offensive struggles started to happen, the Steelers were at home. They had the three-game home stand. They played the, the Dolphins and then the Colts and the Rams and then the Browns on Thursday night football and then the Bengals on the road and then the Browns again at home and then the Arizona Cardinals. And during this period of time, Against in week nine against the Colts, midway through the season, mind you. This is when they got rid of Dante Moncrief. So now they're rolling with Juju. Now they're rolling with James Washington, who, by the way, became a grown-ass man uh, as the season progressed, really made some big plays. Deontay Johnson progressed. So maybe you know they pulled the trigger, and that may have worked out. And everybody can notice that Washington did well, Johnson did well. But guess who was still throwing those guys the ball? It was either Mason Rudolph or Duck Hodges, okay? Yeah. So it just doesn't happen by magic. You got to have somebody to throw him the ball. So you got to give some credit here where credit's due. Colts game, no, no James Conner, no Benny Snell. Rams game, no James Conner, no Benny Snell. Browns game, James Conner, 18% of the snaps, gets hurt, leaves. This game was just a, a mitigated disaster. No Benny Snell. You had Trey Edmonds play 47% of the snaps trying to run him, do whatever you can with him, block, whatever be the case, right? This is the game Mason Rudolph throws four picks. This is also the game, another game where you lose Juju Smith-Schuster and then you don't have him for the following four games either against the Bengals, Browns, Cardinals, or Buffalo Bills. 
He's out. He's gone. He may have even been playing hurt up until that point. Uh, this, this Thursday night game was just a killer in so many different ways. Obviously, we remember the whole Miles Garrett incident and guys getting suspended. Then you lose Pouncey for two games after this. Could have lost even more. Um, Deontay Johnson. Who was it? Was it uh, Demarius Randall that knocked him out? Remember, you said he was. Ble- remember, he was bleeding out of his ear. Yeah. How do people not remember this? So the reason this guy had a, a pretty terrible game. And this game was terrible all the way around. It's not like the Browns were playing exceptionally well on offense either. Steelers defenders, TJ Watt, well, TJ Watt and Bud Dupree both got the Baker Mayfield, and maybe more than once. But and, and he didn't win by gobs of points or anything like that. But you don't have Juju, you don't have Deontay Johnson, you don't have James Conner, you don't have Benny, you don't even have James Conner's backup. <laughs> what the heck are you supposed to do? And then you get your head caved in with a helmet, and now you're part of a whole other incident. You got people. Uh, I don't want to go down the path of this, but they're pointing fingers and saying that maybe things were said that shouldn't have been said. And now you got to defend yourself. You got all this off field distraction. He goes into Cincinnati and you don't have Connor. You get Snell back and Snell actually has some solid games here against the Bengals and against the Browns, even though he's playing about half of the snaps and whatnot here. And, uh, you know, he gets benched. They, 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 they sucketh. And I want to say there was a ball that that hits Juju's hands. Nobody could catch the darn ball in the first half of that Bengals game on the road. Guys were dropping the ball like, like it was crazy. It was like week one in New England with Ben. Nobody would catch the ball. Connor, no, none of these guys were catching the ball. And the same thing was happening. They bench him. They put duck the duck in, and now it's duck mania. And everybody's wearing duck hats, and uh, they, they have duck calls, and everybody loves them until they don't. Right. Absolutely. Uh, they 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 beat they beat the Bengals. They beat the Browns. They beat the Cardinals. Some of this is by the skin of their teeth. They don't have Juju. They don't have Connor for these games. There's even like some uh, there's some mismatch mix matching here too. Ramon Foster ends up getting hurt against the Dolphins. B.J. Finney comes in plays for him. B.J. Finney plays for him against the Colts. So that's week nine. Once again, this turning point. Right. Foster is out against the Rams. They move Matt Filer from right tackle to left guard, put in Chooks Okorafor for the only game he plays in the entire season at right tackle. He plays the entire game at right tackle against the Rams because they're trying to um, not let uh, Aaron Donald destroy them, <laughs> apparently. Sure. So you had an offensive lineup, uh, offensive lineman change in like five of these games. I think it was 11 games where you had the guys that I had mentioned earlier, those five. But then you had some changes throughout. You had Finney come in uh, for Pouncey in one of these games, I want to say, also. Because, uh, oh, that was the one snap against the Browns where he didn't snap the ball and everyone else moved. Right. <laughs> more more mitigated disaster in, the, in these games. So y- you have Finney play in, in a pretty healthy amount of games. He played four of these games, either at center or at guard, and then half of another. So four and a half games where a reserve guy was coming in. Actually, maybe even a little more because he played a third of the game um, for Ramon Foster again against the Jets, and that's the reason I think the Steelers were ready to move on because Foster was starting to get banged up. He was up there, what? He was like 32, 33 years of age as well. Maybe he could have played another year. But also to point out to, or I should say, I'm sorry, he played for for uh, Pouncey in that game, and then he also played for Pouncey in the final week of the season against the Ravens, where once again they didn't have James Conner in that game. It, you didn't have Rudolph. You had you had Duck Hodges. I understand the Ravens were still playing some of their backups, but it, by this point, by this time, this team is so ravaged with injuries. Does it really matter if we have the second coming playing quarterback in there? Even if it was young Ben Roethlisberger who's going to become the guy that he is, there's a good chance these things to join up too. I, I just think that there's just so much. I, I don't know where all the vitriol came from. Everybody liked these guys until they didn't. And it was another one of these um, things where I never liked them. You didn't like I know you've been against the Mason Rudolph thing, but again, what happened in that draft, Brian? I, I doesn't matter. I never liked them. <laughs> I understand, but everybody wanted they wanted Lamar Jackson. People were linking Mason Rudolph. People were linking like a Josh Allen or Josh Rosen. They were saying the Steelers like they do every year, like they did again this year with Jalen Hurts and some of these other young men that were coming out yep. of college. It's we're going to get this guy. They need to get this guy. It's it's the mock drafts. It's the first rounders and everything else. And then it was. Well, they didn't take a guy in the first round. They didn't take a quarterback in the first round. They didn't take a quarterback in the second round. In fact, no quarterbacks went between, I think, was Lamar Jackson the, the fifth guy? I think he was the fifth guy off the board in yeah, that first round. Yeah. Nobody went since him 
until Mason Rudolph went in the third round. And then everybody was they, they were saying the Steelers had a first round uh, grade on this guy, and they and they traded up to go get him. And well, not that guy. We didn't want that guy. Now all of a sudden, it's not that guy. It's like because he didn't have the first round uh, label on him. Now all of a sudden, he was like dog poo. <laughs> It's like, it just, it drives me crazy. It's like, we want this guy. We want this guy. It's the same thing with Artie Burns. Need a cornerback. Need to get a cornerback. Not that guy. <laughs> and me and Zach talk about this all the time. The professor, me and you talk about this all the time. But it just gets to be preposterous. You need to give these guys a little bit of seasoning at least. I think you and I agree that maybe Mason does. I would even say, I know for sure Duck won't be. Duck's not going to be the guy. Uh, no. He would have already been the guy. Um he still wasn't in the most ideal situation, and he still no. did tremendous for who he was, where he came from, how little preparation he had. He wasn't like the – I'm going to look up who the guy was with the Jets that just folded like a house of cards. The guy he couldn't even throw a pass or complete a handful of passes. At least he was capable of doing something, even if it wasn't I, the greatest thing. He came I'm, off the I'm street. Gonna, I'm going to put it this way. <laughs> The coaching staff did an excellent job of placing him in a position to succeed. And they got they kept away from putting him in situations that he would fail. Yes. I, I think I could totally agree with that. And it, it's it's really no different than when me and Zach were bringing up the different lineups and things like that. Uh Tevin Jones, Tevin Jones. Somebody said I said it funny. I don't know if I said it right. Uh, you know, it was things as soon as he dropped the pass, the guy's job was gone. You know what I mean? They bring in mm-hmm. Deion Kane. They bring in Kareth uh, White, uh, both, in, both in that, uh, I think it was that Bengals week. They're completely new to the team. Do they even know, like, five plays? You know, they, here's the playbook. Get get on, on board. Now, I know some terminology and some things are going to carry over from team to team, but these aren't guys that had a full training camp and worked exclusively with either of these quarterbacks or this offensive line or the offense or anything. This is the reason why it was PU stink at many times, and it, and it, and it was that turning point that where you yep. start to get these injuries, you start to get plug and play, you start to shift people around, you start to bring in uh, different bodies. Tony Brooks James, there's a name I brought yeah. up. Plays, for, he's in there for three games, comes in, right back out. It, it just, it just didn't cut it. It wasn't a fit. Nothing against him, but they're trying to do something and trying to win some of these games, and it just, you know, they got the eight and eight. And had they made the playoffs, I don't know that I had. I didn't. You and I said this. We didn't have playoff expectations as soon as Ben went down. Not at all. To get the eight wins or even be in the conversation at the end of the week, at the end of the year, I didn't have the best feeling with that Ravens game. I didn't have the best feeling after they couldn't make a statement against the Cardinals or the Jets, unfortunately. You know, it should have been more of a statement. I I guess the defense made the statement, the offense did not. And we said it many times. It's just. They were running out of gas trying to get to the finish line, and that's exactly what ended up happening. I, I really don't hold it against the the backup quarterbacks as much as what some of these some of these fans do. I would love to see what could happen if you get Mason or even Duck in there. Let's say the Steelers win 12, 13 games, Brian. There's nothing on the line. You have another Week 17 scenario like Landry Jones got in there. And you get to play with a few guys, and he gets a little bit of that shine. That's what I would like to see. And by all means, I have always talked very highly. I put Landry Jones on a pedestal. <laughs> yes, you put you put the Landry on a pedestal, my on friend. On a pedestal, I still you put think it on a pedestal. I still think the two guys uh, you got Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges are unfortunately, I'm going to say better, better situated. Let's put it this way: I think their floor is a little higher than what Landry's was. I'm not going to say their ceiling is. We don't know that yet. We know where the ceiling was for Landry, but the floor is a little closer to Landry's ceiling, I think, in both of those cases, even despite the, how how they played last year. or I'm not even saying they played that bad, to be completely honest. It's just the rest of the, the – the, these combined factors all together does not make – one guy does not make a team go completely down, at least in this case. No, And, and I want to be clear. I think that Mason Rudolph is a fine backup quarterback. Yes. What I don't like is is the idea that uh, what I don't think is that he's the future of the franchise because I don't think that. I think he can be a better backup than Landry Jones was. I don't know that I think that about Duck, 
but um, I don't I don't have a real reason or or any uh, speculation to say I don't. I just don't know whether I think that about Duck or not. But I do think that Mason can be a better backup quarterback. I think he can be a journeyman type quarterback who can come in and win you some games. But if you're going to depend on him for the whole season, you're going to have problems. I mean, that might be fair. I think if we actually saw like Charlie Batch play a full season, Landry Jones play a full season, instead of like spot starts, you know what I mean? We're talking like yep. four to six games where you may have had Leftwich and Batch or, or Landry and Michael Vick or, mm-hmm. you know, something of that nature. Um, you know, I found my guy. I was talking about with the Jets. I think it was – that can't be right. <laughs> I don't think that was right. Luke. Oh, no, it was right. It was Luke – I think it was Luke – was it Luke Falk or who got hurt? I'm trying to see who ended up coming in and get in, got hurt and was just uh, completely abysmal. I don't remember that being Luke Falk. I'm, I'm going to look this up. Hold on. I got to find out because I just remember it was just so bad – um, well, Trevor Simeon, <laughs> oh. three of six for three yards, um, got sacked twice, but yeah, Luke Falk didn't, uh, he didn't generate a whole lot there either, but I'm looking at this. I was like, he was 20 to 25 for 198. Um, didn't throw any picks, didn't throw any TDs, but that, that maybe I'm getting something crossed up. Could have been against the Patriots or somebody too, but regardless, uh, I, you know, it, we're, we're talking about Luke Falk here. <laughs> um, there, there's a lot of teams that have backups that I don't think anybody's going to be envious of. I think there's a lot of teams who have starters that you necessarily can't be envious of. You don't know how many of the draft picks coming in are going to perform. You don't know that Jordan Love is going to be the heir apparent for Aaron Rodgers. You don't know that um, – who's who's my other guy that got drafted in a, in a solid situation, I'm trying to think, this year? Oh, um Taking over for Carson, Carson Wentz, our guy, Jalen Hurts, the guy that everybody linked. Yep. You know, that kind of surprised a lot of people. Does that mean he's necessarily going to be the guy? Is, is it a great insurance policy for Carson Wentz? How does that offense change if Jalen Hurts comes in? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know these answers. You won't necessarily find out until somebody gets in there and actually plays. But I like, again, there, are, like I was saying the last time we went over this topic too with Michael Vick, I think a lot of people forget Vick was a veteran quarterback. But, man, he was throwing the ball all over the place. It was terrifying to watch him <laughs> play and operate the Steelers' offense. And he, he did a couple good things here or there, but there were interceptions that got dropped. There was Antonio Brown was completely ghosted and w- was nobody. You had no idea. He could have he put any number or any uniform on the guy. You wouldn't have recognized him. And that was when he was in the middle of doing things that nobody had ever done in the league You know, before he went crazy and everything like that. But – you put Mason Rudolph or somebody or even Duck Hodges in a situation where they have Antonio Brown or Martavis Bryant, Le'Veon Bell, D'Angelo Williams. I think they succeed a lot better. This, the, the difference is, is that the defense wasn't as good as it is now. I, I'm not as concerned with this this year with the Steelers. Health is always going to be a big issue with any NFL team. You see it. You saw it with the Colts last year. You saw it with the Eagles you see teams that are going to rise and fall. You're going to see uh, a consistency, though, with the Steelers. They aren't a team that just completely falls off a cliff. And I think there's a lot of doubters out there, mainly they're Browns and Bengals fans, who are just itching to finally get their comeuppance, so to speak, and everybody mm-hmm. that believes that the Ravens are now the team to beat. And, and they are. They won the division, so they have the bragging rights right now. But – don't don't write off the Steelers, and please don't write off the Steelers just because of whoever their backup quarterback is. There's many positions on the field where you don't have an all-star team to begin with, let alone a bunch of guys that you could take as the backups and go field a second team that could beat everybody. It doesn't work that way. There's salary caps. There's other constraints. There's guys who don't get to play a whole lot. They're going to be rusty or they're just not going to be that good. Um, They still have to be good enough to play in the NFL, but then when you get the NFL, you're no longer the big fish in the small college pond. You are now a tiny fish in a much bigger pond, and there's a lot of sharks out there. And, you know, there, there's sharks, there's whales, there's everything else like that that's out there swimming in the sea as to make some type of analogy. 
So it's just it's it's going to be rough for these guys, uh, regardless. But I do think that the experience that the, both of those guys had, along with Paxton Lynch, I, I feel comfortable with bringing those guys to camp and going to war. Now, the only thing that you can go and you could kick yourself in the rear end is, let's say you get the training camp, something pops on Ben's elbow. Everybody's mm-hmm. gonna say they're gonna do that Simpsons thing with the with the Nelson guy. Is it Nelson? He's like, ha ha, like told you so. Yeah. Oh yeah. But how can you prepare for that? How do you prepare for that? Is that what you're expecting? Is for Ben to go down and you absolutely have to have the next guy, or Ben isn't Ben, and you're gonna throw the next guy out there? I think what they're hoping is is that the guy they had the first round grade on that they got in the third round that they moved up to get that had an up and down season by getting knocked out by getting benched. After, what did I just say? No Connor, no Juju, no Benny Snell, none of these guys as a supporting cast. You had to do something else because you saw his confidence was absolutely rocked because he got his head caved in with a helmet the week before. So he gets benched. Then he ends up up the guy that replaces him has the same kind of problem. You bring him in, you get a little bit of spark, should have beat the Jets, but he breaks his collarbone. What else can you do in these situations? Tomlin is just sitting there, just shaking his head. He's at home. He's on his couch. He's on the bus. He's uh, driving in his co- rental car. Whatever be the case, the guy is just shaking his head like, what do I do now? You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just that's the situation it is. For everybody that I see a comment for that says, hey, I saw all this last year, and these guys stink. They suck. Everything else. Got to do something different. I just don't subscribe to that notion. I'm writing off. 2019 as a learning experience for a multitude of players. The defense grew. Keith Butler's no longer on the hot seat. Some people do or don't like Bud Dupree. You get so many of these storylines, they change whichever way the wind blows. And that's going to be something we're going to be talking about in the near future here too, Brian, is the guys that are going to be on the hot seat. But we're going to save it for now. I don't think any of the quarterbacks are, in my opinion. And that's where I'm going to leave it. And hopefully, finally, we get off of this topic, and, and nobody else is bringing up the Cam Newtons, the Colin Kaepernicks, the – just name somebody. Is there anybody else even out there besides Ka- – everybody's trying to get Kaepernick a job. And, and I understand the push for wanting to do that given the recent political climate and given his off-field, um, whatever you want to call it, activism. You know what I mean? And I get mm-hmm. that, and I get that that there was that push before, or, you know, him being black. I mean, the guy had a workout, and, and all the things that happened with that surrounding that. There's some teams that are just going to be like, forget about it. There's some teams that are like, he's not a fit, and some of it has might have to do with off field stuff. Some of it might not have to do with off field stuff. I think it mainly is. I, a lot of people see, hey, he played in a Super Bowl, and he has he has the podium that he's speaking from. And give this guy a second chance, but it's also, geez, this guy hasn't played in like four plus years. There are a lot of guys who didn't play for four plus years, even a year or two, that don't get a second. They don't get other chances or opportunities. And again, it's all in who you know. And I, I think there may have been some opportunities out there. There's probably some coaches that he played with that may speak up for him. Maybe that shot will end up happening. But I don't think that's part of the Steelers organization. That's just somebody trying to shoehorn this in to get their clicks, get their views up, create a little bit of controversy that isn't necessarily there, particularly with a team that founded the Rooney Rule. It's just, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get the link. If it were to happen, I'll reserve judgment and watch and see what happens from there. But for right now, I think the Steelers are content and comfortable with their quarterback situation. I can't speak for any of the other teams in the NFL for where that where he may be a fit or anything like that. We saw Cam Newton get signed because, like I said, Jared Stidham, Brian Hoyer, guy has a chance to still compete and, and, and become, become the next guy. The um, New Orleans Saints, once again, it's guys within your division – it's the it's the devil you know and the devil you don't. They had some intimate knowledge and have seen Sean Payton has seen Jameis Winston over the years. We see that lateral move happen a lot. It's happened with Joe Hayden from the Browns to the Steelers. That type of stuff ends up happening quite frequently, usually within the division. It happened with the corner from the Panthers to what, what's his name? He had the baseball bat thing with Odell Beckham. Oh, why can't I remember his name now? But he went to the Redskins. Got paid a lot right. of money. I can't remember his name off the top of my head now. But those type of things usually end up happening. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like just 
fumbling for words right now. We're at the tail end of this. Put a bow on it. I'm just, I'm almost, I'm almost probably people are tired of hearing it. I know you, I know you were like, Hey, we're going to talk about this one more time, but I, I just had to with the Cam Newton thing. It's just, it's just so I think just preposterous. And the number one overall mitigating factor, Steelers just don't have the salary cap. I understand that the Patriots didn't either, but I don't even That's think why the deal is what the deal is. Exactly. And I don't know that that deal would be the same kind of deal in Pittsburgh. Cam Newton is looking at Brian Hoyer and Jared Stidham like, I could beat these guys. I could be the starter. I get to play for Bill Belichick and a franchise that has been a dynasty for the better part of a decade and a half or more or longer. And with the Steelers, he'd be looking at what? He might not he might not get a shot. He's just going to sit there and maybe collect dust. So I think that's the reason it happens the way it happens. Any closing thoughts, Brian? We finally put a nail yeah. in the coffin. <laughs> Let me just state unequivocally that I think that what happened to Colin Kaepernick is wrong. I, I do believe he was blackballed. I do believe he was kept out of the league. And I don't believe that any of that was correct. Now, does that mean he just needs a job now that he's 32 years old and hasn't played in four years? No. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It means that, you know, He's a 32-year-old ex-quarterback who had three bad seasons under his belt before he lost his job. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't condone what happened to Kaepernick, and I'm not in supporting that. But my complete and total uh, it, issuance with what the Steelers should do has to do with the fact that I don't think he's any better than the guys they've got right now, and he may be worse, and he hasn't played for four years. So, you know, it's a position that you need to play. Yeah, and it's it's tough, too, when you are got a lawsuit against the league. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it takes two to tango, and we don't know what kind of contract terms go back and forth. We we say these same things with other players. I mean, look at Le'Veon Bell. You know, his demands versus what was offered, et cetera, et cetera, and they couldn't get on the same page. So it, it's so tough to speak for so many different guys that are out there. We don't know what Jameis Winston might have wanted. Remember that, that somebody said that the Steelers had made it off or two, and it's just, you know – the players got to want to go to that team too. So you can't necessarily, yep. you don't know that there's been offers or there's been any links or anything. So a lot of it is just speculation. That's all the more we can do in this situation ourselves a lot of times. So, you know, we just try to make the most educated guess and see what actually makes the most sense. And you got to remember whether you agree with the politics of Colin Kaepernick, agree or disagree. Don't I don't care which side that you're on. The Steelers, from the top to the bottom, just had to deal with Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, Le'Veon Bell, and Le'Veon Bell hold out playing games with them and everything. Le'Veon Bell is like way at the bottom when it comes to being a I think as far as troublemaker for the team. But the, oh, yeah. but these were still distractions, regardless, that occurred yes, in this were. locker room and probably sunk the ship that was the 2018 season. We're only a season removed from that. So with that being said, agree or disagree, I don't know. A lot of people are going to say, hey, they, they took a chance on Michael Vick, but a lot of other teams had already done that first. They weren't the first ones out the gate to do that. Michael Vick was off for a little while. You know what I mean? There's some parallels there. There could be an opportunity I just don't – those are the reasons I don't see the Steelers necessarily doing that kind of deal. So I'm just going to close the door on that. And I also ask, keep the comment section clean. We don't need people in fighting with one another. <laughs> so just remember, uh, we're all brothers, sisters, and whatever in this football community. We're all family. Sometimes we're going to agree to disagree on some certain things. Uh, but, you know – uh, sport is something that's great and brings us together. And I think football brings us together like nothing else. So that's how me and you met Brian. And that's why I call you my brother from another mother. And I love you, man. <laughs> I love you too, man. Oh, oh it's so a, sweet. It it's is a so touchy sweet. feeling now. It really is. <laughs> so 
folks um we're gonna see if we got anything else going or if we're gonna blow uh well geez i almost made a really probably inappropriate joke that would have involved um jason pierre paul and the fourth of july but anyways uh be safe out there if we don't if you don't hear from us during the holiday weekend please do enjoy um you, the festivities the cookouts if you're able to be with uh, any type of family and friends depending on your situation with the entire you know quarantining and pandemic and everything like that uh, at least try and relax and uh, we hope to hear uh, hope to talk to you again soon not necessarily hear back <laughs> you're usually the ones listening to us but we would like to hear from you so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and brian thanks once again for joining me today Always, always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Always, always, always a pleasure. Brian, my eyes are swelling. I think I got too much sun, uh, you know, the yesterday, my friend. So <laughs> it's time to, it's time to wrap it up. So folks, uh, you know, we're very sincere here and, uh, we try to be as honest and forthcoming as possible. Just, uh, know that nobody knew who Kurt Warner was when he stepped in as the starter for the Rams. I don't even think their public service announcer even knew. So with that in mind, um, he had a hall of fame career, but anyways, I digress. My name's Joe. His name's Brian. Until next time, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com 